We're going to introduce everybody and tell tell us what you did at Don Pro Studios, please. I'm John Nolan, and uh, I was head of R and D and special projects from 1978 to 1983, and did the liaison and all the Star Wars stuff and 44 special projects, including Dune and Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi, all that stuff. So a lot of I was hearing a lot of yes, please. John, pardon my puns. Hi, I'm Barbara Ort Hitchcock, and I worked at Don Post from 1977 to 1985. I did a little bit of everything. I worked as a receptionist, I worked with data entry, I initialized their first computer system, so I didn't do any of the art, but I certainly enjoyed being around the artists that were there. I will, we, John, clearly. I love what he said. Don, without the people filling the orders, there's no orders, you know what I mean? Bill. Studios too. And what does he do now? Paul? Yeah. He's uh, executive vice president of feature animation at Fox. Oh. And he works at John Post Studios. Yeah. I'll give him my card. Okay, coming down line. <laughs> I'm Steve Wang, and uh, I never actually had the pleasure of working at the studio per se. But I did do a bunch of freelance masks for Don uh, in the late 90s, like 1998-ish. And I brought this mask because this was the very first mask I ever made for Don Post Studios. Oh, nice. It was so funny. Right? <laughs> and, and this was also painted by Rob Forrest as well, this copy. And the way this came about was I, I had met with Don for the first time and being a big fan, you know, after I did my fanboy spiel. Uh, Don says, you know, I want a kidney bean alien. And I said, what's a kidney bean alien? And then he said, he pointed to like, you know, the aliens from the movie, you know, and I thought, okay, I, I get it, kidney bean. So I went away and I did the sculpture, and this was the, the first of many masks that I sculpted freelance for Don Post Studios. My name is Michael Levitri, and I've not known Don I've known Don since I was about 10 years old. And uh, I was privileged to have Don and his father help take my first life cast when I was 11 years old, <laughs> and which I still have. I used it to learn a lot of things about sculpture and mold making. And, and then uh, jump ahead. I worked with Eric actually on the development of the Stormtrooper mannequin in, uh, what was it, 97? Roughly, somewhere in there. So I was there for about a year and worked on a lot of the Star Wars masks. I gotta, I gotta say something. I have to say something about uh, Mike. I met him when he was 10 years old, when he rear-ended me on his bike while I was driving my car. He wasn't looking, and he, he ran into the back of my car. Now, how do you randomly meet somebody like that? He's a very talented guy and uh, worked briefly at Don Post Studios on the Star Wars stuff. Cool, how about that? <laughs> it's funny, Michael Levitri used his life cast to teach himself how to sculpt. I look at mine and just think, how did I get so fat? Um, <laughs> Ross. Uh, my name is Russ Lukic, and 
I grew up <laughs> uh, Ross Lukic fan. Uh, I grew up a Don Post fan and a Don Post collector. And uh, 2010, 2011, around that time, uh, Don was kind enough to, to give me work as a sculptor. And uh, I did whatever Don told me, so that's. <laughs> um, may I have some tape? Uh, Eric, here you go. Careful. Well, hello, all you marvelous people who I have thoroughly enjoyed hearing your uh, excited buzz today throughout this great uh, event and um, seeing all the uh, masks and things that you're all uh, creating. Um, I got the privilege of working with Don during the 90s and uh, through the turn of the century. And um, during the uh, Lancashire uh, facility, which had um, a rather large production aspect to it. It was absolutely stimulating to walk into a factory that is dedicated to making these things and seeing the molds and the age of things around, it's, it's real exciting to lift up a foam master that has a dust footprint around it. It's really cool. And to have uh, latex arrive in a tanker much like you see on the, on the streets. Um, I don't know how much that cost you, but uh, we took it for granted because it was like latex coming out of a faucet. Uh, you could just turn this faucet on and it was quite extraordinary. We, were, we would buy latex at 3,000 gallons uh, at a time. We had a 5,000 gallon tank and we'd buy 3,000 gallons at a time. And to shave it to your hands, so we never <laughs> And, and that, was, that was pretty cool. Eric is an interesting fellow because when he came out to interview for, to look for a job, his car blew up on the way there. So he rode a bike. And he didn't have any money when he started working there. And uh, my wife and I go to the movies and we'd see Eric every time at the movies. Well, the reason was, is Eric didn't have a place to live at the time, and he was sleeping in a graveyard wow. here down in Burbank. And, and the guy, and the guy, the guy, the guy who, the, who worked in the graveyard felt sorry for him. And so he'd give Eric clothes. The problem is that the clothes would button up the back oh. because they were for the corpses. <laughs> and Eric, Eric was really talented. One of the really excellent selling masks that Don Post Studios ever had was Slash. And that was the first thing you ever sculpted at Don Post Studios. And then, not only that, but he was instrumental in going up to Lucasfilm with me in order to get all the pieces for, the, for those Star Wars characters that we did. And uh, we went up there and measured them and drew, drew them and, and did all sorts of things to, uh, got a whole bunch of things to bring together so that we could cre create those characters. And Eric, he's just fantastic. And I, I have so many good memories. I love you too, Don. I love you too, Don. I love you too, very much, yeah. And actually what we did um, is uh, we brought the parts down so Mike Levitri could fix all of Lucasfilm's work. Um, anyway, uh, passing the, the mic on. Um, thank you very much. I don't know. Uh, anyway, I have to tell, get uh, back at you, Don. Um, the Lancashire facility um, didn't have a large mirror in the uh, sculpting area, and so the bathroom had the biggest mirror. So Don would come in and uh, take your mask and wander into the bathroom, and <laughs> then you'd, you'd hear from around the corner. <laughs> and, and then he'd come out and hand it back to you. <laughs> And I said, Eric, so people are going to trip these uh, over these things. It's got to be picked up. It's got to be cleaned up. And he says, well, he says, 
I know where everything is. He says, I won't step on anything. Eric is not the cleanest guy. But, but he was good. Don, if I don't pass this down, the guy with the tattoos is going to shank me in the parking lot. I'm, I'm Mikey Rotella. I'm the guy with the tattoos. Yeah. I don't have a shank on me though right now. So. It's all right. I, I was lucky enough to do a handful of, of sculpts in 2012, I think. And uh, I probably don't deserve to be up here, but I'm just glad that I got a little piece, you know, and I got to be part of Don Poe Studio just for a second. So it's, it's huge for me because I'm up in the thing. Hi, my name's Ken Horn. And I worked with Don Sr. and Jr. <laughs> in the earlier days. And I worked with the hair department with June, and I did all the hair, and we had to get those hair on that mask in zero time. We had like almost 60 masks within an hour we had to do. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, the whole group did it, yeah. And then uh, Don was nice enough to hire me back. I quit the, museum, the studio and I went to do Superman, the motion picture. But he said, nobody's coming back if they're in the movie business. And I came back and he goes, okay, I'll hire you back because you know how to do hair. <laughs> Uh, my name is Susan McGinnis. I airbrushed from 1974 to 77, and I think I was one of the first people that really knew how to repair an airbrush, because I remember people were kind of like, huh? You know? <laughs> and uh, these are my uh, gift giveaways, the pens and the uh, magnets there. And to show you how long uh, latex, how long latex lasts, this is from about 1974, bold cap. Yeah. Ken Horn is wearing one of those bold caps now, as a matter of fact. <laughs> um, so do you know, uh, I think what we'll do, because we have such a nice informal group and it's so nice, why don't we, if you have a question, who would you like to direct it to? Uh, I know we want to hear about some special projects John has and, and whatnot, but let's start with a few questions. Uh, any, anything anybody has wanted to ask the employees of Don Post Studios, other than why didn't I ever get the mask from Famous Monsters? Yep. That was someone else to be mad at. Um, so any questions? Ursus, anything? Or Yorko? <laughs> You're just a gorilla, okay. A question, yes, please, stand up and say it out loud. Uh, for Don, what's the true story behind Death Cyborg and the Vader? The true story behind Death okay. Cyborg. You want a true story from Don? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Eric. <laughs> um, actually, Cyborg was sculpted a year before Star Wars. Bullshit! <laughs> It was sculpted by Bill Malone, and it was sculpted a year before that movie came out. And we started selling them, and, and when Star Wars came out, there's no way you could make enough of those masks. I, we had no idea how popular that would be. So people would buy the cyborg mask, and they would get a Nazi helmet or something like that and sell it with the cyborg mask. And Lucasfilm came and uh, they called and they said, what's with this cyborg mask? It looks a lot like Darth Vader. And I said, and can you send one? So we sent one over there and they said, when did you sculpt this? And it had a copyright on it and we said, it was before Lucasfilm. It was before Star Wars. We didn't know anything about it. We know nothing. We were mowing our lawn. <laughs> so it was, it did precede Star Wars. Maybe it was something in our collective minds that said um, that this was coming, that told us that this was coming. So it did precede Star Wars. And it did, we did make a lot of them because people couldn't get the Darth Vader masks. 
We had no idea. I mean, when I originally looked at our artwork, I said, this will be bigger than Frankenstein. Well, it was. It was a lot bigger than Frankenstein. I was estimating we'd sell twice as many of these as Frankenstein. And it was way, way bigger than that. Don, would you just tell us briefly how Lucas contacted you? You were one of the original licensees, right? Right. Well, the way, the way that it worked, is I got this envelope in the mail, yeah, and it had this me. beautiful uh, catalog on Star Wars. It had pictures of legions of stormtroopers lined up, had pictures of Darth Vader, and some of the other characters. And I was wowed. I showed it to Bob Short and Bill Malone, and I said, oh, we got to get this license. So I got the thing on a Friday, and I said, I'm going to wait till Monday before I call him because I didn't want to sound, be too excited about it. So I called him with a little bit of chip on my shoulder. I said, yeah, it looks pretty good. We'll take a license on it. So we became the first ones, besides publishing, to agree to a Star Wars license. They sent me a one, Mark Pevers sent me a one paragraph thing. This letter, and it said, we appreciated the job that you did on Planet of the Apes, and we thought you might be interested in this. You can have this license for a $500 upfront charge and guarantee. Now today, you'd, you'd be looking at a quarter million bucks. 